Yeah, so this is a timer for an exhaust fan in my uh, house and uh, I replaced it twice and after about a year it does this. Which is obviously quite annoying. Uh, rather than replacing it again with the same old model which seems to break, I'm going to replace it with an electronic timer. Let's tear this one apart and see what's going on. Okay, this is the uh, Leviton LTB30. Uh, it's uh, got a number of reports on the internet uh, about the buzzing sound. It doesn't seem like it's an unusual problem with this particular model. It seems like it's a fairly common fact. Let's uh, take it apart here and see what's going on. Looks like the uh, fascia here holds the, uh, the buttons on. Uh, there it goes off. Let's just uh, pull the screws off here and see if the plate comes free. Okay, last screw here, pull it out, and that looks like it's the uh, sticker here we have to cut across to uh, keep on going. Ah, okay, so it's not an anti-tamper, it's just simply um, the connection to the uh, ground wire, which is uh, nice to see, so maybe there is some sort of repairability to this module after all. Okay. Looks like uh, some uh, push-button switches for the times. Uh, looks like almost certainly going to be a microprocessor. It has that characteristic um, label on the top telling me it's a program part. And that comes down via some flex cable to some more uh, components below here. Let's see if we can uh, pop those out. Give it a yank, I guess. Let's see how this thing's made. All right. Looks like there's uh, two circuit boards. Gosh, there's a... I'm going to zoom here. Uh, this thing... Um, Vibrates back and forth. Whatever for? Well, it's a relay, of course. Um, the relay must get partially energized by mistake, and of course that would recall result in buzzing. Let's um, let's see if that's true. Let's let's reconnect the power here and see if this uh, relay starts to vibrate, uh, which would imply that a capacitor maybe is drying out or something uh, on these assemblies. Okay, so I've uh, just connected it to a power supply a lead, and of course here's that relay, here's the switch with the microprocessors. I'm just going to re-energize the uh, product and uh, see if we can see what's uh, causing the noise. I suspect it is the relay, of course. All right, now we're energized, and uh, we turn it on, and sure enough, um, the little arm on the relay is actually bouncing back and forth, uh, making and breaking at a very high rate of speed, which of course is kind of uh, undesirable to say the least. So this relay is uh, doing something called chattering. It's basically the driver is not strong enough to keep the coil engaged in the right position. It falls back out, then the power supply can build up and try drawing it back in. Two possibilities, either the driver transistor down here has been under-designed uh, it just doesn't have enough current carrying capability to hold the position. Uh, or much more likely, the power supply going to the relay is inadequate, and as it pulls in the relay, the power supply voltage drags down and the circuit disengages. The reason why that's most likely is that there's a capacitor here, which looks like it uh, forms a smoothing element to the, the voltage for the relay. Uh, now, to check that out, I tacked on a capacitor here uh, in parallel, so we've increased the capacitance. So let's just re-energize this circuit. Uh, and see if this really now pulls in reliably. Okay, so now the circuit actually just seems to be working. You can see the little relay element uh, pulling out if I turn the system off and pulling in if it turns on. And of course this is the exact behavior the assembly had when it was new. So now the question of course becomes, uh, did the design engineer put a very marginal component here so basically as it ages uh, it sort of pulls out, or has this value uh, been significantly degraded over time? Now this assembly is not old, it's under a year. Uh, I think this is not the second time I replaced it, so uh, let's just see here. Looks like the failure is basically being traced though to this uh, capacitor.
So here's the capacitor. It's marked as a 1 microfarad, 250 volts. You can see it connected to a meter that's measuring a capacitance, and the meter is reporting out uh, 5.8 nanofarads, which is, of course, dramatically less than the uh, 1 microfarad that this uh, unit is supposed to have. So uh, this capacitor essentially has failed, and uh, that's resulted in the assembly buzzing. Unfortunately, another example of a small and expensive electrolytic capacitor resulting in a bunch of e-waste, because uh, obviously I've had to replace this time or twice, and now I've chosen a different brand in my third uh, go around, so uh, very unfortunate. So let's see if we can sort down why this capacitor failed. I think it's a design problem. If uh, we look at this uh, thermograph here, we can see the hot regions of the board. Let me just inset the circuit board so it's easier to locate what we're looking at. Uh, three regions of significant heat. There's a, a resistor near the AC power section. Uh, there's a, a The coil itself seems to be getting fairly warm. Uh, and then there's this resistor here next to the actual capacitor which failed. And you can see it's actually uh, reaching a, a significant temperature. Um, this is just simply with the uh, the timer uh, not actually operating. It's just simply uh, waiting for someone to press the button. It's having to uh, warm up uh, a significant portion. So what I have here is just a, a probe going across this power resistor here. The thermograph said it was getting quite hot. And I suspect what it's doing is actually dropping nearly the entire voltage converted from AC to DC, probably about 150 -ish volts, drops it down to um, drops probably 100 and some volts across here. Uh, and there's probably a little linear regulator here because this little pick micro needs 3 volts. So they got to get a very high voltage down to a very low voltage. Um, problematically, they haven't chosen a switching regulator, so the only way to get rid of it is essentially through heat. So it's uh, reading 0 volts right now, but let me uh, plug the uh, unit back in and uh, we'll see what it reads back out at. Okay, yeah, 146.7 volts uh, across this power resistor. It's a, a 22 kilo ohm resistor, so it's dropping a huge amount of voltage and uh, uh, dissipating about 0.9 watts from my calculation. Of course, the problem here is this resistor here was placed right next to the capacitor. You can see I've now removed it. I've got the uh, little uh, tacked capacitor in the back there providing the capacitance it needs for the assembly to run. But uh, what the design engineer did was essentially put a gigantic heat sort right next to a capacitor in that... Uh, uh, really shortens the life of an electrolytic. It basically boiled off the electrode light, I suspect. So here's just a view of the capacitor looking straight down. I removed its metal case. And then what if I unfold the uh, wrappings, I can see, of course, the paper and the metal. And uh, it, it's absolutely dry. So uh, indeed, it looks like the electrolyte has uh, boiled out of the uh, capacitor. So such an unfortunate design choice here, putting a capacitor next to this resistor, which I think is just warming it up and uh, causing it to uh, fail prematurely. Uh, and so unnecessary. Uh, they could have put a ceramic capacitor here, they could have moved this uh, resistor, or they could have picked different topology where they use a switching regulator and they don't need to drop so much uh, voltage and uh, create the heat uh, that basically is driving this capacitor to uh, premature failure. So uh, at least I think that's what's going on with these things and uh, I think it's basically uh, related to a design choice they've made that's probably uh, shortening the life of a lot of these assemblies. So the relationship between failure and temperature is really well understood in electrolytic capacitors. Uh, there's lots of white papers on the web. I've grabbed one here. It's well written uh, if you want to read the whole thing. I'll put the link to it uh, in the description of this video. Uh, but it has a graph in it and shows the typical failure rates. Uh, it's a log axis in the vertical there. And it's basically showing as you increase the temperature by about 45 degrees centigrade, the uh, failure rate increases by an order of magnitude or 10 times. So it's one of the reasons that you'd want to keep your electrolytic capacitors as cool as possible if your goal is long service life. So that was the failure analysis of this Leviton LTB30 um, and unfortunately some more uh, e-waste from my bin.